are back with the one and only Jiggly. May I call you Jiggly? Yes, you may. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, uh, now, are you still friends with Fifi O'Hara or you Yeah, now? me and Fifi are still friends. Uh huh. That's not gonna end. Oh my God. Fifi's the only one who gets my evil. Oh, right, okay. So, like, and she hates the fact that I'm such a bitch. And she's like, she's like, how the fuck? Do you look like the saint and I'm the asshole? Right. <laughs> she was like, with your mouth and the shit you really say. I was like, well, I was like, sorry, bitch. Sorry, girl. <laughs> Are you enjoying season ten? You're why get excited for the new girls and oh, the new I'm stuff. I'm so excited. Just the fact that there's five New York bitches in there. Honey, oh my god. Um, well, this is. What does I, that say about the country's drag, though? Let's well, say. New York drag has always been the fiercest, <laughs> sweetie. Hi. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about All Stars three and its winner? Um. <laughs> is this oh, okay? So, this is how I think about that. Vendela started it. Yeah. Okay? Vendela was like that angry boyfriend that was like, if I can't have you, nobody gonna have you. Uh. So, whoever wins now is by default because the bitch who was winning uh. took herself out. So now how, do you, how can you tell who is gonna win? Because those shade Ben would have slayed all those challenges after. So, yeah. you know, but it re to me, it should have been, the top two should have been Dela and Shanji. Mm. And then, you know, Trixie won, but like, it, it is what it is. And them hoes are shady. Well, that's what Shangela gets for referring to herself at Game of Thrones, bitch. You know what happens on that show. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you don't trust none of these hoes. <laughs> ever. <laughs> that is one thing about drivers I have like learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you, Fifi. <laughs> it's trust. <laughs> uh, uh, it's like trust no bitch. Trust no God, bitch. God, <laughs> like seriously, like it's a hundred thousand dollars. People can get evil, and yeah. They will, and they did. And they did. They showed their asses. They're all like, time. oh well, you spent, spent you spent nine seasons getting here, trying your best, think you're the all star, Kennedy. Davenport uh -huh. and Trixie. One vote. That's all she got. That was so evil. The gag. And it was from the one who said she was a, a, a stupid bitch, bitch or shady bitch or whatever. Isn't that ironic? Very ironic. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Ray Yane, right, Erica? <laughs> On your wedding day. On your wedding It's a free ride. Free ride. Uh, so all right, Jiggly. Let's talk about the most important thing, which is your new album, Thought Process. Okay. That's T H O T, o -T. Thought Process. Uh -huh. That's how over there, yeah. So it's a hip hop album. Yes. Um, tell me about how the project started, how they. Talked you into burying your soul on this whole album? Have you been yeah. thinking about it? Tell me everything. So it originally started because after my songs on Christmas Queens were pretty much a bop and people would buy, like, it was a, there was a good response for it. Yeah. So my management was just like, you know, to try to do an album. They've been asking me actually to do this, like, since my season. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, no, no. I didn't want to do that because I just didn't want to be... I just didn't have it in me at the time or whatever. Like, this is all just built pent up progression. But I was just like, no, I'm not doing it until like last year. They were like, you know, really consider it. And something happened, I guess, since the last time I was here that I was just like, it was kind of like my come to Jesus moment where I'm just like, fuck it. Like, just let myself go and, uh -huh. and let me try. Why not? Like, wh when am I going to get another opportunity? Like right. This? They're giving you producers. They're giving you yeah. beats. You, so I you was know. like, you know, I was like, only if I could do it my way, you uh -huh. know? So I was just like, in they or we were in talks, right? They, they thought it was going to be more of a comedy, like hip hop, like comedy hip hop, like what he did with Ratchet Christmas. Right. So then it was some other things. And I was like, you know, I have a voice. There's things that I want to talk about. And there's things that I want to like, do without sounding preachy or anything like that, like, you know? And that's what I did, and I'm glad. What was your process for figuring out the album? They would give you the beats? So they would give me my, the music, and then like I would have to come up with like a theme or something to um, the songs. Like, Fuckboy was specific because of what I wanted. I wanted it to sound, have some kind of Asian things to it. And I, because I knew what I wanted to do with the video and how I wanted that song to, to go. Um, so, like that song, and then like, Puro Penai, there was like music in there that was specific, like instruments from the Philippines that I wanted to incorporate if I'm gonna do a, a Tagalog song. And 
that's what I did. Like everything kind of like, you know, the music first, and then I start writing, and then the ideas and themes for it are like all in there. D Lady Red, you love that one song where you're speaking tag. What is it? You tag Tagalog? Yeah. So that was one of your favorites, right? That is my favorite, honey. That's the song you should do every single time. I'm gonna learn that song so I can sing it to trade. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, now tell me about the process on that song, what your thought was, because that's a song with you and Mila Luzon. Uh -huh. You're talking about the Philippines and yeah. Filipino people. That must have felt uh, pretty fun to be able it to record. It was a lot of fun to record, and I was really proud. Of, I'm really proud of that song specifically because I wanted to rap in Tagalog, and then I also wanted to like acknowledge like famous Filipinos like that are out here killing the game uh -huh. and you know like even though it's like all about just like visibility for me like I want people to see that there's a lot of amazing Filipino talent and I want I'm one of them so wow tell them I... what you call yourself in the song bitch what tell them what you call yourself in the song a jungle Asian diva <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's true though. Like I was a street kid, and then I became a, like the jungle Asian diva. I mean, Philippines is in a tropical, very like it, there's a jungle there, bitch. So yeah, yeah I love it. Um, bitch, I am Moana. <laughs> So you you got the tracks. How did you decide who was going to record with you? I mean, obviously Manila was an obvious pick from both exactly. of you having the same heritage. You wanted to be able to get into that song. Yeah, I mean, like choosing. Like first, it was like who do I want? I was like I ran the list down, and my manager like let's see their their schedules. So um, the ones that were available did it, and I was glad because like so specific songs it just had to be with them, mm. um, like. Pretty Girl Anthem, I wanted Peppermint to be on there because I was like, we're the two trans girls from Drag Race that do music. I want it. Plus, she's also my New York sister. I was yeah. like, let's go, you know. Uh, like, and it was fun to have her. And like, yes, we are pretty girls, and that's what it is. Uh, Fifi was um, perfect for Beat of My City because I wanted it to kind of have that LL Cool J vibe of like, you, you know, summertime. And I wanted somebody who loved New York. And when Fifi moved, like, when Fifi moved to New York, she fell in love with the city and just, like, so I wanted to have her side of what she liked about New York and then my side. And bless you, could she give you those Jeremy Carey vocals? Hello. I was like, come on, <laughs> those Timberlake. Those smooth bitch. Jeremy you know, Carey like, vocals. She was like, I know Sharon, like, says that Fifi, Christina Aguilera is it. I'm like, go Timberlake that up, girl. <laughs> so, yeah, she did so good. And I was like, she was like, well, do you want me to sound like a girl? I was like, no. I was like, sing your voice. You meet Jeremy. Hello, paint, paint on each other and roll around in the bed. Girl, that video sounds fucking <laughs> wrong. I was like, I can't look at my sister like that. Uh-uh. Girl. <laughs> now, you talk about Sharon Needles. That's a great duet partner for I Don't Give a Fuck. Because uh -huh, she, she definitely does not, not give, give a, a fuck. fuck. <laughs> it was like perfect. Sharon is the like one of the most unapologetic people I've ever met in my whole life. And she was like the perfect one that if because we both have said some problematic things on in public, so. <laughs> yes, you have. You know, and I, Sharon is like the perfect one. And for people also to be like, oh, Sharon hates Jiggly because she said two drag queens dating was this kind of thing, or whatever. Oh, right, that's some, again, these some Nancy Drews have some and I'm shovels, like, and, I'm like, bitch, and they're they digging deep. Like, you're after, <laughs> fuck y'all, exactly. leave me alone. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> that in case you missed it, that was your famous comment where you thought it was disgusting that two queens would Kai Kai. Uh -huh. And of course, number one Kai Kai in the world, Miss Sharon Needles, uh -huh. like, was not happy with that. She will. So Hart wasn't happy with my answer either. She oh, was like, right. really, bitch? And I was like, sorry. Sorry, girl. <laughs> I was like, I think I told you this, though. Now, what was, now, how did you, did you have the girls come in and be in the studio with you mm -hmm. when you're doing the album? So everyone was a face-to-face -face collab. Yeah, it was like a face-to-face -face collab. Me and Sharon actually wrote this our song together because they were like the people who we addressed, bitch. We, we did. I mean, I saw uh, Sharon throw some sublim shots in her verse to Jeffree Star and some other queens. Mm -hmm. Pardon my French, apparently. Oh, no, that, that was with. not subtle. That, that was, was not sublim. That him, was on point. We wanted to let him know and everybody to know that that motherfucker is a crook. Oh. Okay. Okay. You don't owe. You don't have queens work for you and not pay them. Uh huh. Sorry about it. You owe us forty grand. We want our money. Wow. 
It's either that or I'm breaking your legs, God damn it. Oh, shit. <laughs> they won't let me. This is some drama that I did not know about. Right, you know what? We're going to get into all that on Look It Up, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to get into that whole story there. Hey, queens. Hello, children. To see part three of this interview, click here. To see more Hey Queen fabulousness, click here. And don't forget to subscribe, bitch! Hey! 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 <laughs>